Rich visual modeless feedback. It's a bit of a mouthful, to be honest. It is a visual design technique or visual design principle. Um, we've included it as a, as, a, as a separate short video um, after or broad look at a number of different visual design principles. This is a particularly useful one. It's one that offers a lot of opportunities uh, in terms of how we can integrate information into our designs that will be of use to the user. So in terms of what it is, well, modeless feedback is simply feedback that we present but we don't require the user to acknowledge it. And that contrasts with uh, modal feedback. It's where we show, present some information to the user and we then say to the user, okay, I, I want you to click on this button to indicate that you have read, understood, whatever it is, that information. If it's modeless, it's just presented on screen, end of story. Simple as that. So rich visual modeless feedback, RVMF, it takes the existing elements that we have inside our interface and it integrates this information into it. So, so we're talking about how do we integrate information into the existing design elements that we have on our interface. So it's visible to the user, but it doesn't interrupt the flow of what the user is doing. It's just available, it's there. If the user wants to look at it or use it, they can. Games provide a number of really good, fantastic examples of uh, rich visual modeless feedback. And the screenshot you can see here is one of uh, a civilization game where we have a number of different hex tiles and the contents of those tiles are very, very rich in terms of what they represent. So where we have um, a city tile or, or a village or a town or a city, here we have one in the center for St. Petersburg. The size of it is then visually represented. So something that's going to be small will be displayed small. As the town grows, it visually becomes bigger. So the user can glance at this and they don't have to then worry about or think, okay, how big is that? Is it is it town? Is it going is it beyond that? Visually, the size of what we're displaying provides a representation of that. Likewise, in terms of, for example, the resources that you might have in an individual um, tile, they're layered on top as well. So it's, it's very rich, depending on what the user wants to, to, to know, to think about. They can look at the interface and there's an awful lot of information embedded quite subtly into that interface that then lets the user find out this information. It saves them from having to click to look at all their information displays. It's all there in front of them. And that is fantastic. That's the type of things we want to try to bring about through our interfaces so that the information is there, doesn't get in the way of the user, but it's still available for them to use. So when we talk about rich as part of this, this particular term, we mean rich in the sense that we are displaying visual information that dynamically changes over time. It's not static. It is changing information. It's live information. And that, that, that's quite important because for those elements that can change, it gives us a way of, of indicating that change has happened and also showing what the current value is. Um, obviously, it's modeless because we're not we're just displaying it and it's up to the user what he or she wants to do with it. For the images you can see in this screen, we've got a number of um, good non-game examples. So one would be, for example, of, of, um, on an app store, where if you've clicked on a particular um, app and it has to install the app, then as opposed to have a completely separate screen, it integrates it into the icon. It shows an overlay then of it being installed, a little bit of text, and you can see when it is installed then through that. For a lot of messaging apps, they may display then a little icon um, or a, an overlay on top of the icon to indicate, well, do you have any unread messages or notifications and how many of them are there? So you can look at the icon, you can see it there, but you've that piece of additional information that's layered on top. Whereas, for example, something like you can see the team set up here, they have an icon for the individual, but next to that you have another little symbol that indicates their availability. So all of these things are integrated in, they're quite subtle, but they're also quite rich in terms of giving us useful additional information that's available there for us to visually to see, to look at, 
doesn't require us to click on anything, to look anything up, it's there, but it doesn't get in the way of things. If we're not interested in it, we don't really even pay any attention to it. So rich visual modulus feedback, really powerful. It's absolutely something you should be thinking about how can you use inside your designs to more effectively convey and present information to the user that's going to be potentially of use to them. Next session after this, we're going to go on to think about displaying information, facts and figures and tables and things like that, and some of the design techniques we can use to best display information.